Hi friends, welcome to EduTab. So as part of this video series, EduTab brings to you a discussion on the various topics related to agriculture. These topics are useful for examinations like NABAT Grade AB, IBPS AFO, FCI, IBPS AFO Scale 2 in RRB. So we have already done video 1 and video 2 as part of this series. So kindly watch video 1 and video 2 before coming over to this particular video. So in this video we shall have a discussion of those questions that give that were given as part of homework in video 2. Now before moving forward let us have a look at the various courses that are offered by EduTab. So EduTab offers courses for RBI grade B, NABAT grade A and B, CTET, which has been launched in association with Grade Up, free tests for RBI Grade B 2018 examination. As part of our future courses, we shall provide UPSC Civil Service courses and IBPS AFO. To know more about our courses, kindly visit our website www.edutab.co.in. Now let us start with the question number one. The question says, what is meant by cropping intensity? Right. So before we move on and understand this particular term, let us understand what is meant by gross cropped area and net zone area. When we are done with understanding these two terms, it becomes easier for us to understand the meaning of cropping intensity. So now let us take an example of a village where there are few patches of land and each patch of land is say five hectares in size. Right. So what happens is now let us talk about gross cropped area first. OK, so now let us take the Kharif season. So in this particular season, we are planting. Four patches of land, each being of five hectares. So totally 20 hectares of land have been cropped during the Kharif season. Right now comes the Rabi season. Now in Rabi season what happens is we are again cropping the same land that was used during cropping for Kharif season right. So during Rabi season again we do a total cropping on a land of 20 hectares. Okay now keeping this example in mind what is going to be our gross cropped area. So a gross cropped area is going to be 20 plus 20 a total of 40 hectares. Now when we take into account the gross cropped area we also take into account the number of time a particular land is sown during a particular agricultural year right. That is the area is counted as many times as there are sowings in a year. So here we see that these patches of land were sown in the Kharif season and they were again sown in the Rabi season. So a total of 40 hectares of land saw sowing on it, right? But for the same patch of land, if we calculate the net sown area, our answer is going to be just 20 hectares because we do not count the number of times a particular land is sown, but just the sowing that takes place in that stretch of land. So here let us see the definition. It says the total area sown with crops and orchards. The area sown more than once in the same year is counted only once in the case of our net sown area. So having understood the concept of the gross cropped area and net sown area, let us have a look at the definition of cropping intensity. Now let us have a look at the formula first of cropping intensity. The formula is nothing but gross cropped area by net sown area into 100, right? So basically we mean that cropping intensity is nothing but raising of a number of crops from the same field during an agricultural year. So here the same field is the key to understanding cropping intensity. So rather than increasing the area of production, we are using the same land more than once in an agricultural year, right? So in the previous example that we had seen, we saw that a village has stretches of land or each being five hectares, right? So here basically we have nine patches of land, each of five hectares. So totally there are 45 hectares right 
Now what happens is if we use all the stretch of land or patches of land only once. So what we are doing we are using them only once in an agricultural year. So our gross cropped area and our net sown area both are going to be 45 hectares. Right. So our cropping intensity is going to be 45 by 45 into 100. So it is going to be 100. Right. Now in that case we see that cropping intensity the minimum value is going to be 100. It can never be below 100 because our gross cropped area will either be equal to the net sown area or it is going to be greater than our net zone area right so kindly remember this as well right now let us take the second case where we are using three patches of land twice in an agricultural year so now what is happening our gross cropped area is going to be the same that is for uh, is going to be 45 plus 15 more 15 more hectares because these three patches of land have been used again in the second season during the same agricultural year. So we are going to be totaling this 15 again and adding this to 45 right because the same stretch of land have been used twice. So it is going to be 60 hectares and our net zone area is obviously going to be the same 45 because we don't count the second time usage of those stretches of land. Right. So what is going to be our cropping intensity? It is going to be 60 by 45 into 100. So it is going to be nearly 133. Right. So we see that when the land is used many number of times during an agricultural year, our cropping intensity increases and is obviously more than 100. Right. Now let us move on to the next question. Let us discuss the second question of ours, which is nothing but related to zooming cultivation, right? It is also known as slash and burn agriculture or cultivation. Now, we had seen in the video two of our series that the Eastern Himalayan zone had the, has the prevalence of this particular type of cultivation, right? So just simply speaking, what is it? The land area, it may be on hill slopes, which has forest cover is first cleared that is the felling of trees is done those are left to be dried naturally and then that particular land area is burnt now after it is burnt before the onset of monsoon cropping is done on this particular land area now we need to keep in mind that after burning potash a lot of potash is actually transferred to the ground to the land so that land automatically becomes fertile for crop production so now because of this whenever there is a crop which is planted here fertilizers are not used during plantation of such crops in this area right now after the cropping season is over this land is left fallow that is nothing is done on it and it is just left as it is. Now during the period that it is left as it is, there is vegetative regeneration that is allowed on it. So automatically naturally we see the uh, trees being cultivated there. This is the natural vegetative regeneration that is taking place. Right now after a couple of years when proper regeneration is completed, again this land is chosen. The same process repeated that there is felling of trees done, drying, burning and then crop sowing. So this is a kind of a cycle that is followed. Right. Now what is the disadvantage that has been seen lately in this zooming cultivation? See the thing is usually when the land is left fallow the land requires a good number of years for regeneration say maybe seven years or ten years right only then we can see that proper regeneration takes place 
if the land is used after these many years it is very good but nowadays what is being done is proper regeneration is not allowed within some 4 to 5 years this particular land is again used for crop sowing so we see that the cycle that was earlier 7 to 10 years have come down to 4 to 5 years thus the proper regeneration of natural vegetative cover is not being allowed so this is a very uh, important disadvantage of zooming cultivation now let us move forward and see the next question now let us discuss the question number 3 which says what is the difference between the production of a crop and productivity of a crop so many students use these two terms interchangeably but they are different let us see how are they different so when we are talking about the production of a crop we are saying that certain inputs have been used and we have got an output so basically what we are doing is we are quantifying our output right we are not bothered about how efficiently have we utilized our inputs that these are our resources at disposal right so let us take an example to just make concepts clear so here we have a 5 acres of land and using inputs like seeds fertilizers water labor and obviously this stretch of land we produce 1500 kg of rice so basically we are producing paddy and then rice rice is obviously the unhusked paddy so using this stretch of land and all the input that we have received we have got this output as 1500 kg of rice right so we would say that our output or the production is 1500 kg of rice from 5 acre of land so this is our output now we are not bothered about the effectiveness of these inputs that we had applied but when we take into account productivity the aspect of efficiency of production comes into play so basically what we are doing is this is a ratio of output to input in production so basically to understand this concept clearly we are going to just see the land that we have used as input so what has been our output 1500 kg of rice and as land is 5 acre so our productivity comes to be 300 kg of rice per acre right so this is called a productivity we are talking about a unit of land so in our case a unit of land is 1 acre so this 1 acre has yielded 300 kg of rice for us now when we talk about this productivity what we do is we seek to increase the productivity that means from the same unit of land if we can extract say for example 400 kg of land that means we have increased the productivity of the land because keeping all the inputs constant please remember this word that we are not altering our inputs we are keeping all our inputs constant and from the same input we are deriving more output so in that case our productivity goes up now this productivity concept can be understood better when we link it to our day to day lives now suppose for example a student completes two chapters per day right now the same student if he is able to complete three chapters in a single day then we say that the productivity of that student has increased because on a daily basis here a unit is one day so on a daily basis he has increased his efficiency by one chapter so his productivity has increased right so what do we have in store next for you guys so as part of our next video which is a video 4 of our series we shall have a discussion of zone 4 and zone 5 of the agro climatic zones as classified by the planning commission with this we have come to the end of this video if you want us to discuss any specific topics related to agriculture kindly mention in the comment section below we shall try our best to come up with a video explaining those particular topics till then friends thank you and happy learning